Welcome back developers. In this video, we want to talk about how are we going to create and grant permissions to new users in a database. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is all part of DCL and DCL stands for data control language. And that's going to be what gives us those permissions to control our database. You see, not just anyone can walk up to a database because if so, that would create a lot of potential issues. All database management systems, whether relational or not, are going to involve some sort of security. So let's look at what we need to use. So I'm just in a text editor so you can kind of see it all at one shot. We're going to focus first on this create user. And create user allows us to specify the user name, which is very important. In this case, I put Scooby. Now, Scooby is my fictional character because he's come kind of getting popular again but it may be based upon a username that the company gives you. So you might see, you know, first name dot last name, or you might have first initial last name or something else. It could be an application name because you might be creating a service level account. Then we have the at, and we want to know that not only is it this user, but from where is it located? So if I specify it has to be on this local host or your local machine, which is perfect for this test environment. But what that means is the originating login has to be on this machine. We can't pull it from some other machine, even in our own network. It's an extra layer of security. So just because of the right username doesn't mean they can access it. Okay, so we have our username at, and then what machine are we available to? Now, we can put in an IP address and we can use a star to have it be generic. So a lot of times a local network will look something like 192.168. something something. So we could say 192.168.star.star .star .star .star, and that means okay as long as you're inside this local network we'll let you have access to it. Then we see identified by password. We have to put a password in here. And this is the default password. We could also use plugins that handle different types of plugin architecture to say, okay, well, maybe if they're connecting, automatically go out and check their user network credentials or something like that. So there's other ways that we can do that. I'm not set up for this. This is a test development environment, which is just why we're showing it here. Now, once a user is created, what can they do? Well, absolutely nothing. You might say, well, what do you mean they can do absolutely nothing? Well, they can't do a thing because we have to grant them permissions to do something. So if I come over here and my next command is grant and grant, there's a lot of different things I can grant. I can say grant all and grant everything, or I can specify specific commands. And this is what commands are they allowed to execute? So Scooby here, you notice I say, on star.star .star to Scooby. We'll talk about that in just a second. They have the ability to create, alter, et cetera, et cetera, as you see there. If they didn't have something there, they would not be able to access that. They can only issue those commands and the commands that are relevant to it. So for example, a select statement or delete statement has things like a where clause and stuff like that. That's incorporated in with it. We'll talk more about those SQL commands coming up. But for right now, they can only do certain things. To what databases can they do this to? Well, they can do it to all databases because you say star dot star. Now, I could specify only specific databases. So I might come in here and only specify the customer example database. And that's great. Scooby here is set up more as an administrator. You can access any database, you're good, but we can actually focus it down. Once again, I'm specifying Scooby at localhost, being extra specific, and then I say with grant option. Okay, so the with grant option lets me go in and grant that. Now, if I wanna go in and remove a permission, I have a revoke command. And so what I can do is I can specify revoke, and then what permissions do I want to revoke? I don't have to revoke everything. I can revoke just a few. So for in this case, I have revoke, alter, drop, and delete. Just those three permissions. They still have all the other permissions, and that's fine. 
to what database. Here I say on star.star and then to who is my user. Now let me show you real quick how I do this in Heidi SQL. So here inside of Heidi SQL, I'm going to come up here to tools and choose user manager. Here is my user manager. I'm going to choose add. What's my username? Scooby. From, notice it has localhost as a drop down. I can choose my local network. I have a couple different options. I can choose everywhere. I can type something in. I have my password and I can specify some default passwords. They give me some default passwords I can pick from or I can type in my own. Notice they give me different values of strength. So one place I work, typical end users had to have passwords that were at least eight characters. But if you were on the IT admin side, you had to have a password that was at least 15 characters long. So that's why they have some different links. The longer the password, typically the harder it is to crack. Notice we have to enter this in twice just to make sure that we have it. I can choose to add privileges. What privileges do I want? Well, I can choose everything or I can choose these specific ones. So you can see how many different permissions they have. I'm going to choose global privileges. Over here, I can set some limitations if I want. I don't need that. I'm going to click save. Notice it doesn't like the fact that I have an empty password. So I'm just going to type in a password. And notice that it, you see a password here. Now you might go, wait a second, is that what you actually typed in? No, this is the encrypted password. And you can see here I have Scooby localhost here. Now I can see my passwords here. I can choose to add objects to specify I want for everything or just specific databases. I chose everything, which just made it a little bit easier for this demonstration. Obviously, it's not great for security. You have to figure out what's the appropriate level of security that you're going to give for a user on a database. Great information to know, great information to have. So this is just how we do it inside of Heidi SQL. Obviously, if you're using a different database interface, it's going to look a little bit different as well. When you're done, click close and you're good. Hopefully you found that helpful. Stay tuned to look at how do we start querying our database to get information out of it. Now we have a database created with data and we have the permissions to do so. So stay tuned for that.